All right, so let's take a look at the Unit 6 test review. Um, let's see if we can't do some of these problems and get you ready for that big, exciting Unit 6 test. All right, so uh, directions, use any of the properties, learn to find the missing angle measures. So uh, pretty simple here. Um, I'm given a triangle. I need to find X, and then it, really important on this test, guys, is that you read the directions. Uh, if you stop just at finding X, you won't get the whole thing right, because then I have to list the sides in order from least to greatest. Okay. So first, let's find X. I know that uh, 62 and 42 add up to 104, which means that there's only 76 degrees left over here. So 26X minus 2 equals 76. 26X equals 78 and so x equals 3. When I plug that back in 3 times 26, okay, um, I, I'm going to plug that back in. It should work. I get 76 there, so I know that's what that angle equals. Um, sometimes if you just want to check your mark, or check your work and make sure that you're getting, um, getting, getting things to work out the way they should. So 76, 62, and 42. Greatest to least, the side. So the biggest side is across from the biggest angle. That's AB. Medium side across from the median angle. Bless you is AC and the smallest side is across from the smallest angle that's BC and bless you as well okay uh, number two classify each triangle by their sides and their angles um, so this is an equilateral equilangular equilateral is equal sides equiangular equal angles. Uh, this triangle right here, um, none of the sides are congruent, so that's a scalene, and there's a 90 right there, so it's right. So this is a right scalene. Got to know our vocab. Gots to. Uh, name the smallest angle of triangle ABC. The diagram is not drawn to scale. The smallest angle is across from the smallest side. The smallest side is 5, so angle B. List the sides in order from shortest to longest. Sides and shortest to longest. The mistakes made here are that people list angles when they should list sides, or they don't go shortest to longest, they go longest to shortest. So you really got to concentrate and make sure that you're answering specifically what's being asked. Shortest side is across from the smallest angle, so that's JL. Medium side across from the medium angle, that's JK. And the largest side is across from the largest angle, and that's KL. All right, that's page one. We're on a roll here, people. Figuratively, if you're actually on the ground rolling, you should stop. Uh, you could you could roll over in an awkward way and poke an eye out with your pencil. Which three lengths could be the lengths of the sides of a triangle? Well, the lengths of the sides of a triangle, the smaller two sides, their sum has to be greater than the largest side. So five plus twelve is seventeen. So that's not right. And bless you again if you're uh, sneezing. Uh, 9 plus 11 is 20. That's not bigger than 22. 7 plus 6 is 13. That doesn't do it. It's this one right here. 10 plus 15 is 25, which is greater than 24. The two sides of a triangle have lengths of 12 and 22. Determine the possible length of the third side. Okay, so that's a range question. We don't know the exact length, but we know it could be between two numbers. To figure out the two numbers, we take these two, and we plus them and minus them. So 22 minus 12 is 10. And 22 plus 12 is 34. And then I'm going to show this as an inequality because I like to show off. All right. Determine, if you're going to do it as an inequality, by the way, it needs to look like this. X has to be greater than 10, but X has to be less than 34. Determine if each triangle is right, obtuse, or acute based on the sides that are given. So we're doing uh, A squared plus B squared. And then I like using that circle. Uh, for c squared, and then I'm going to fill that in with either you know less than, greater than, or equal to, and then I'm going to make a judgment based on that. So let's see, 5 squared is 25, 6 squared, and it's the two smaller sides, 36, and that's going to be greater than 49, so this is acute. 12 squared is 144, 13 squared is 169, uh, when we add those together, we get 313, and that's less than 625, which is 25 squared. Now, I would, so I think my answer is obtuse, but we need to check here. 12 plus 13 is 25. This isn't even a triangle. So I did the math, but then 
you know, so I think it's obtuse, but I always want to check and make sure it is a triangle. 9, 12, 15, that's 81 plus 144, uh, and that is 225, which is equal to 15 squared, so this is right. Two sides of a triangle have lengths of 10 and 18. Which inequalities describe the values that are possible lengths for the third side? Uh, plus them and minus them. So 8 and 28 are the numbers we're looking for. Um, so I can immediately eliminate those. Uh, it can't be greater than or equal to. Remember, it's got to be just greater than. So the answer here is B. Find X and Y, depending on what teacher you have. You know, you might have learned a, a different method of doing this. Some people use a chart. Some people use some sort of grid. Um, I prefer the, the tic-tac-toe looking thing. This is a 30, 60, 90, so I'm going to organize my data, my information with short hypotenuse leg, 1, 2, square root of 3. The long side is across from the 60, the long leg. So that's 12, and then Y is the hypotenuse, and X is the short leg. Uh, I'm going to solve using a proportion. I can tell right away this is a, a fraction uh, that's going to have a radical on the bottom, so I'm going to have to rationalize, which is fine with me because my algebra skills are something slight. I don't know what that means. I saw it on Twitter recently, and I wanted to try and work it into my vocab. I multiply the top and bottom by the square root of 3. I get 12 times the square root of 3 over 3, and then that can be simplified, okay? 12 divided by 3 is 4. So x equals 4 times the square root of 3. And then y is just that doubled, okay? The hypotenuse is just double the short side. So there is my answer. The length of the opposite, I'm sorry, the length of the leg opposite the 30 of a 30, 60, 90 is 2. So again, I'm going to set up my information, SHL, 1, 2, square roots of 3, that's 2. Find the length of the side opposite the 60, we'll call that one uh, X, and find the hypotenuse, that's Y. So 1 over 2 equals the square root of 3 over X, that's a 2. And we get X equals 2 times the square root of 3. The hypotenuse is just double the short side, so that's 4. Easy enough. On we go. Find x and y here. X, this is, we have to recognize right away, this is a right isosceles. X and uh, this leg are the same, so x equals 10. And again, if I set up my data here, it looks like this, LLH, 1, 1, square root of 2. This is x, this is 10, this is y. And y is going to equal, when we cross multiply, 10 times the square root of 2. Number 12, an isosceles right triangle has a hypotenuse of 13 feet long. For some of us, and, and I'm one of these people, the drawing is really useful. If for nothing else, then it just helps us see what we're working with. Okay, So here's my triangle. Uh, the hypotenuse is 13. It says it's isosceles, so I know these are congruent. Okay, So set this up. 1, 1, square root of 2. This is what we're looking for. They're the same. I get 1 over x equals, move this up a little bit, 1 over x equals the square root of 2 over 13. Cross multiply and get this. And I recognize right away I'm going to be rationalizing again, um, which like I said earlier is fine with me. Multiply the top and bottom by a square root of 2. Earlier when we rationalized, we were able to simplify. Here we're not. We have 13 on the numerator, 2 on the denominator. So that's it. We're done there. Let's go back up here. Find the missing side of this triangle. The mistake here is that students, for some reason, just go straight to using the special right triangles again. We can't because we're not given 30, 60, 90, or 45, 45, 90. This is just a simple Pythagorean theorem problem. We get x squared plus 8 squared equals 13 squared. We end up getting uh, x squared plus 64 equals 169. x squared equals 105. We take the square root of both sides and I get x, x equals the square root of 105. You want to check and make sure that's simplified. Um, I know it is. Uh, the factors of 105 are 5 uh, five times 21 and 21 is 7 times 3. There is no perfect square that goes into that. So 
if you're leaving in simplest radical form, your answer is 105. Find the missing side here, same thing. I have to make sure it's leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared, and the hypotenuse is across from the 90. So that's 9 plus 25 equals x squared, x squared equals 34, and x equals the square root of 34. Easy enough. Joanna wants an eight-foot ladder to reach a window six feet above the base of a wall. How far from the base should she position the ladder? All right, so a drawing here sometimes helps. Uh, that is god-awful. Let's use... So here's the wall, here's the ground, and here's the ladder. So it's an eight-foot ladder. Uh, the window is six feet high and we want to know this distance, okay? So we have a squared plus b squared equals c squared. x squared equals 64 minus 36 is 28. Uh, then we have x equals the square root of 28. 4 goes into 28, so this will simplify to x equals 2 times the square root of 7. All right, uh, given the coordinates negative 2, 3, there's A, and 6, 8, there's B. Find the measure of A, B. Now, I, I don't need the drawing to do this. I, my, my skills are sharp. But sometimes the drawing helps because if you get an answer that it just looks way off for either distance or midpoint, you can kind of look at it and at least say, I don't know if this is right, but I know, or I know, I don't know if this is wrong or why it's wrong, but I know it's not right. The distance formula is the difference or distance between the x's squared, which is 8 squared, plus the difference or distance between the y's squared, so that's the distance between 3 and 8, which is 5, so that's 25, and it's the square root of that. So this is the square root of 89. Uh, here, the midpoint is just the average of the x's, so that's negative 2 plus 6 is 4, divided by 2, that's 2, and the average of the y's, that's 5.5. Uh, and again, you can look at the drawing and see, like, you know, are you close? And... Um, 2 is here and 5.5 .5 is up here, so I appear to have done this correctly, okay? Sorry, and no, I haven't. That's, see, happens to the best of us. Sorry, guys, there was a mistake in my drawing, which is why I'm glad I checked it because this wasn't showing up right. Don't you wish you could just do that and just move it over a point? There, now 2 and 5.5 .5 is there, and that looks like it's the midpoint, so I'm good to go. Sorry about that. My math was right. My drawing was bad. All right, let's take a look at the next page. Given the coordinates of A, negative 1 and 6, that's A. B is negative 5 and 4. Do distance formula again. We'll do Pythagorean theorem this time for those of you that like doing that. This is 4. This is 2. So we have 4 squared plus 2 squared equals x squared. Okay. That's 16 plus 4. So that's x squared equals 20. x equals the square root of 20, which if we're simplifying is x equals 2 times the square root of 5. The midpoint, add them, we get negative 5 plus negative 1 is negative 6, divided by 2 is negative 3, and 6 plus 4 is 10, divided by 2 is 5. Given the coordinates of A as 282 and the coordinates of B, the reason we choose these large numbers is that now, now you have to know the formula here. The difference between the x's, so let's get our calculator out, the difference between the x's squared, so that's 250 minus 187, 63, and then squared. So 39, 69, and it's going to be the square root of that, plus the difference between the y's, which is 78, squared, so 6084. So uh, 6084 plus 
is the square root of 10,053. Let me make sure that that's not a perfect square. So 100 point, even if we were rounding to the tenth, it would be 100.3. The midpoint, okay, so just the average now. 250 plus 187 equals, divided by 2, is 218.5. And then 86 divided by 2, we know, is 43. M is the midpoint of AB. So let's see. We give ourselves a segment to work with. We'll say this is M, A, B. M is 4, 6. A is 10, 11. If, uh, to find B, from 10 to 4 is down 6, so we go down 6 more, so that's negative 2. From 11 to 6 is down 5, so we go down 5 more, and that's 1. So negative 2, 1 is the point right there. Number 20. The lengths of the sides of the triangle are given. Classify each. So here we're just doing, um, is it a triangle? So I know right away this is not a triangle. Um, 3, 4, 5, 30, 40, 50, those numbers keep coming up over and over again, so I can recognize that as right. Same, 3, 4, 5 doubled is 6, 8, 10, so I know that's right. Here are the smaller two sides squared, so 81 plus 196 is not greater than 400. So this is obtuse. 225 plus 400 is greater than 441, so this is acute. Check your math on that. Make sure you got the same answers I did. Here we're simplifying radicals. Uh, so I'm finding the largest perfect square that goes into it. So this is the square root of 16 times 2. And this is 4 times the square root of 2. This is 8, 10. The perfect squares we, we should recognize right away. 13 has nothing. Square root of 50 is the square root of 25 times 2. So that's 5 times the square root of 2. 72 is the square root of 36 times 2, so that's 6 times the square root of 2. 24 is the square root of 4 times 6, so that's 2 times the square root of 6. Uh, 8 is the square root of 4 times 2, so that's 2 times the square root of 2. 108. 108 might be a tough one for you, so let's, let's think of some things that go into it. I know 36 does. I'm pretty good at my times tables. Okay, 36 times 3. So that becomes 6 times the square root of 3. And six, uh, 160, 16 goes into that 10 times. So this is 16 times 10. That is a 16, and that is times. So we end up with 4 times the square root of 10. That's your test review. There's more on uh, converse, inverse, contrapositive uh, on the test also. If you want to see that, there'll be a, uh, that'll be up as a PDF, some example answers on that on the class webpage. Good luck.